Hi everybody, this is Jeremy Siskin. I'm the author of the books, Playing Solo Jazz Piano, as well as the Jazz Piano Fundamentals series, which are good to hide behind if you need something to hide. Um, <laughs> that's really what I recommend buying them for. Um, all right, I got a mail recently, which is a very common question for beginning and intermediate jazz players, which is that they understand the theory, they can improvise, but keeping the form proves very difficult. Um, and they might often find themselves getting lost while improvising, um, not knowing where the rest of the band is, not knowing where they are. And this is super common. And before I give you some tips and tricks, let me just say the best thing to do is just to keep doing it. <laughs> like keep showing up, keep improvising with a backing track, keep improvising with a band. One of the things that I tell my students is that everybody makes mistakes, everybody loses the form. Um, professionals are just very good at getting back on track instantly. About, they make it sound good to the point where maybe nobody, not even the other professionals on stage, knew that they were lost. So there's no shame um, in getting a little bit lost, although of course we do want to try to minimize it. So. There's no uh, substitute for that on the job experience and just repetition. So find a gig in a cafe, find a jam session, people that you can play with three times a week, uh, because that is really the most direct path there, even though we all want a special tip or trick that will help us. And with that in mind, on to the tips and tricks. Um, and I don't know if these are, are necessarily any uh, you know shortcuts, but the first thing is to practice in time and in form. So practicing, you know, just your scales, uh, just isolated two, five, one licks uh, is nice and useful, but make sure that a lot of your practice time is spent actually practicing playing. Uh, don't be scared. Don't feel like you need to already be playing well or be able to not get lost to practice playing a full tune. Get in there, do it. And if you're doing exercises like with a two, five, one, you know, just for instance, um, I love this little just three, five, seven, nine arpeggio exercise. Do it over two, five, one, sure, but also do it over the form of a tune. It might take a little bit of creativity um, in order, you know, if the harmonic rhythm is changing speed, if it's going really fast and then really slow. Um, but you can absolutely be creative with it. Um, nobody's, there's not gonna be a jazz teaching police saying, well, that's not quite the right way to do it, so it's not gonna help. It's gonna help. So if I was doing that uh, exercise over, for instance, there will never be another you, I'd go can't do it with a metronome, that's not a sign that you shouldn't use the metronome. That's a sign that you should A, play with the metronome, but more slowly. B, try a smaller um, amount of music. Try just four bars, try just eight bars until you can get that, okay? All right, next bullet point, play something with the left hand to keep track. Um, I think it is hard, especially as a newer improviser, if you're just playing with the right hand, um, to figure out where you are. So for me, and with a lot of my students, I just tell them to play the root, not because it's functional. Uh, I mean, it doesn't like sound bad, but I wouldn't ever like do it on a gig, but it's just for you to make sure that you know where you are at all times. Um, don't try to play the most complex left-hand thing, you know, comping with a whatever feel while you're improvising if that's gonna get you off track. Start with just marking the time, so that you know where it is. A lot of the practice for staying with form, I know that's very messily written, can be done away from the piano. So one of the things that I did as a young jazz musician was I would, um, at that point, everything was real books. I would have my real book out, I'd have a recording, and I would just listen to the recording, follow the form and make sure I always knew where I was and see 
if you know when the melody came back around if i was right at the right point and if it wasn't then i probably need to do something different right i mean and you don't have to wait that long you know that soloists almost always change right at the top of the form so uh those miles davis uh albums like relaxin are just such great ones to just get out your real book put on if i were a bell or something like that and just check okay am i able to stay with uh, with the form of the tune, because that's going to really reinforce your ability to follow that form. One of the, um, oh, this is as far as my sheet goes. All right, I'm just going to hold it here. One of the real tricks of professionals following the form uh, well is that we think in terms of longer phrases. So instead of, you know, sure, we are able to think one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. But we also, and more so, really feel the four and eight bar phrases. Um, and professionals immediately, if there's a tune with a three or a five or a six bar phrase, uh, we immediately key into it and we're like, oh, that was weird. Um, and we kind of mark it in our mind that there's an extra bar, an extra two bars, or one bar short, okay? Um, and one way to do this just immediately is instead of thinking one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, be able to process one, two, Three, four, one, two, three, four, right? One, two, three, four. That is totally going on while everything else is going on. Um, and professional musicians are keyed into that. We always know what makes a four and an eight bar phrase. And then, like I said, we know if something is different. So that's one of the ways that we're able to know where we are without really thinking about it. We're able to kind of feel where we are. All right, I've got to change views here. Uh, let's do this one. All right, so we are on that uh, second bullet point down. Do something to mark the form. There is absolutely no shame, and in fact, it's a kind thing to do for your bandmates to mark the form. Um, by mark the form, I mean simply to do something special when you're at an important part in the form. And probably the most important parts in an AABA tune will be the top of the form, very, very important. Um, and then the beginning of the bridge, very, very important. In an ABAC tune, it'll be both times you start the A section, so at the top of the form and the midway point. Um, and what I would recommend is you give some kind of a signal that might be audible to bandmates who are paying attention. Um, but not noticeable to the audience. So if I'm comping um, on there, there'll never be another. So we're eight bars through. different right in the bar leading up to bar uh, 17 the halfway point of the form I hadn't really done something that uh, noticeable not only is this a kindness to your bandmates but it's usually musical because this is an important point in the tune so this is a good place to do something a little bit different to do something um, that might fill in the space in a different way and very often melodies are holding in this space, just like the melody to There Will Never Be Another You is holding in this space. So you can help yourself, help your bandmates, and be musical by doing something to mark the form, comping a little bit more actively, going to a different kind of voicing, holding your comping rather than playing it short. If you have been holding, then you can play it short then. Putting in a, a nice low bass note. Or oftentimes I hear musicians playing on beat two, which is kind of a rare thing to do when comping. Um, but that can be kind of a signal that, hey, we're at a weird part of the tune. We're signaling that we're coming back around to the top. Um, all right, these last two bullet points. This is the second to last one here is, is pretty common advice. Sing the tune in your head while improvising. Um, you know, you can only multitask so much. But one way, again, I would practice this by listening to other uh, musicians, other soloists, and singing the tune in your head or out loud while they're playing their solos. 
is that you start hearing the relationship between the tune and the harmony and the form. Um, it would also be very useful to be able to sing the roots of the chords and be able to sing that along because that's going to help you hear the harmony. Oral skills are incredibly important to this. If you're able to hear the difference between a major and a dominant chord, between a one chord and a six chord, between a one chord and a four chord, etc., cetera, um, then you're not going to have too big of a problem getting lost because you're always going to more or less know where you are. You might get lost for a couple bars, but then you can listen and key in. If everything sounds the same to you, then if you're not like really actively counting, you're going to have a hard time. So, you know, uh, learn how to identify different chord qualities and then learn how to identify different chord functions like one chord, four chord, six chord. You should be able to hear those things if you want to become a high level amateur or any kind of a level of professional jazz musician. And then my last tip here is kind of a practice tip that as you practice, you can work inside in rather than kind of continuously. I'm missing that why on continuously. I think it went off the page, but that's okay. And what I mean by this is that you can choose to practice things that highlight the form. So for instance, I love practicing things um, where I'm playing the thirds of chords. So I could practice I'm on the, that will never be another U still. All right, so pretty hard to get lost when you're doing that because you're not really just out improvising, you're really thinking about the chords. And then you could think, okay, I'm going to play the third on beat one and I'm going to play a no note of my choice on the ant. sometimes, I'll leave it up to me, I'll leave it up to whatever I want, um, I'm going to sometimes play one and, and I'll sometimes do one and the and up two. So it might be, or, but I'm still hitting the third always on beat one. it's a little bit harder. I have more decisions to make. But I'm practicing right along with the form instead of saying, oh, I'm going to use this scale and I'm going to improvise and we'll see where I end up. I'm really uh, linking my improvisation to the form. So that can be a really good way to practice. All right, guys, I think to finish off, I'm just going to play a few courses on There Will Never Be Another You. Um, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, uh, check out my books. I think uh, they do a really good job bringing you up to a uh, intermediate advanced level from the ground up. All right, so here's There Will Never Be Another You. Enjoy. <laughs>
All right, everybody. Thanks for watching and take care. I'll see you soon.